What are we waiting for? We scoping the place out, man. We ain't gonna just run up in there. That's how you get shot. <sighs> Say that again. You are. Wow. Who? Yeah. What is it good for? Absolutely not. You don't know nothing about no war. Everybody knows war. Who? Yeah. What it is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Good guy. You are. It ain't you all, it's y'all. 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 You sound like a karate movie. Y'all. Y'all. Say it from right here with some soul. Y'all. 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 Let me show your goofy ass how to do this. What is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Oh my gosh, look at that. This is our new opening. We have our debuting our new co-host here on Rush Hour. That's right, we are at episode 11. I know that I force everyone to take a little bit of a break due to my work schedule, but we are back. We have a jam-packed show for you guys. But first, I would like to introduce my brand new co-host. So if you guys are not familiar with the real deal, Damian Adams, we had worked together previously on another podcast for... About three years exactly, I think. Next week will be three years. So he decided to take his talents over to the Rush team. Uh, if you didn't see that video, it's probably still floating around on Instagram <laughs> where he did this great play on the LeBron decision. Um, and so now we are back. If you're not familiar with us, get familiar because Damien and I bring you quite a different show. Speaking of, this show is going to look a little bit different in the football season it's going to be all fantasy all betting picks but of course it's the off season so we're a work in progress but we're still bringing you best bets so we're going to end every show with a little bit of basketball we'll give you our best bets um and we're going to do a little nc double a today we're going to talk about all the free agency moves and we have rob roche coming on in about 10 minutes five minutes uh sports agent so it'll be fun to pick his brain but D, welcome. Welcome to Rush Hour. <laughs> yes, thank you so much for having me. I truly, truly appreciate it. Uh, for you guys who don't know me, I am Damian Adams. You know, I'm an Aquarius. I like long walks on the beach. Oh. You know, I am, <laughs> I'm somebody who I've been covering sports for a long time, and I'm always looking for someone to work with who definitely keeps me going as far as motivating me and challenging me. And no one's going to challenge me more than Nikki Six over here. So I definitely right. think I'm in the right place at the right time. That's right. No, uh, this has been, I think it's something that's been in the works for a while, just so everybody knows. Um, so I know we rotated some hosts and we're going to continue to do that because uh, we know you guys love the Rush crew, but uh, Damien will be a staple. Please, if you're not following him, please follow him on social media. D, go ahead, read it out. They're not used to it. So go ahead. Where can they, <laughs> where can they find you? Yeah, so you can find me on social media at the Real Deal WDA. That's the Real Deal W as in whiskey, D as in Delta, A as in Alpha. Uh, you may have seen some of my videos since the Rush team has been sharing it the last few days. Yeah. So I'm always giving you a different video on something, either boxing, basketball, football, something in that realm to keep you entertained, keep your thoughts going. So go ahead and give me a follow. You'll definitely appreciate the content that I'm always pushing out there. And now you'll get rush rants, rush basketball, rush boxing yeah. uh, from my account. So I definitely think it's worth the follow. Go ahead and check me out at the real deal WDA. Yes, he is worth the follow. I see the fam is in the house. Mark is here. Joe is here. Chris is here. Uh, Darius is here. I hope you all signed up for the rush hour bracket. You still have time. You can still join. We'll get the link out to you again. The password is rush hour. Actually, if you just go to CBS sports bracket and you type in rush hour, it should come right up. Um, I got a bracket, which sorry, D, I still didn't fill it out yet. What I want to do is hear what everybody else has as their final four and then copy. Uh, that's yeah. the best well. way that I can do it. And just so you guys know, you don't have to know anything about college basketball. I get this question 
all the time. You guys probably saw, you know, got some DMs. They said, oh, I don't know anything about it. Well, you don't have to know anything about college basketball. You can literally just be like, I like the colors of this uniform. I like where this team plays. They play in nice warm weather. I'm going to pick them. So we are giving prizes out to the top three. I know we have some gift card prizes floating around, some rush merch prizes to give out. Um, so let's see. You'll be up against me, D, Danny's playing. Uh, I think Craig might be playing too. So we'll see. we got the whole crew in. But I mean, D, is there any strategy to your bracket? It's no, I'm not a big college basketball fan, so there's no yeah. strategy to my bracket. I'm definitely more of an NBA guy. But when it comes to the brackets, I have been known to, you know, get a little lucky. Maybe I'll get that, you know, that prize that's in there. If you want to try to get that prize, you may want to go ahead and join now because the tournament does officially start tomorrow. Like tomorrow is when the madness begins. So you might want to go ahead, including Nikki, go ahead and fill yeah. out your bracket. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead. Yes. Including go ahead. The, the woman who started it and was making everybody do it, didn't even do her own. <laughs> um, I'm going to be very unproductive. Between all of the free agency moves that have been going on, all of the news that we have to follow, plus March Madness starts, like, are you, I'm going to be very unproductive for work. Yeah, no, there's yeah. nothing like at my job this time of year, no one's doing anything like eyes on the TV, side bets yeah. are going on. Yeah. And again, I don't get how people are doing side bets when most people are not following college basketball the way they used to. And that's a, maybe that could be a subject for another day on how college basketball hasn't, has kind of fallen off as far as the way we pay attention to it. You know, it yeah. used to be a, like this time of year used to be a, big huge thing right we knew like oh the georgetowns is in the dupes in north carolina so who's going to win what star player was going to pop up now it's a little different now right and i think that having these type of brackets though does bring the attention to it and i think that i'll definitely be rooting for my final four so let me go ahead and give you my final four and see if maybe okay this is a good final four the people in the comments can let me know if you know if you know a little bit about it let me know if this is a good final four i know my man p shark is in there. He already saying that he took PTO for tomorrow and Friday. Oh, so he's nice he's like he's he's avoiding it all together. Like I'm not gonna go to work. We're gonna we're gonna make sure that Taking I'm focused that on the tournament. Time. Yep. So let my man P, my man P Shark tell me if this is a good final four right here. So my final four, I have Alabama. I've heard good things about them on the court, not off the court when it comes to them, but on the court when it comes to Alabama. Houston, I've picked. I know P Shark might be mad about that pick uh going against his Memphis team there. Uh, Marquette and UConn as my final four. And I have Ooh. Alabama winning the championship. So let me know if that's a good final four. I see that we have a Duke fan in the building as oh, well. Sure. That's my upset. I got Duke going down in the first round. You heard it here first. Duke is going down oh. in the first round. Don't hate me, Austin. Don't hate uh -oh. me. I got Duke going down in the first round. Already. <laughs> Eight minutes into the new show and already losing <laughs> I, that's what I do. I just I just, I just go ahead and go out to go out to popular teams that we have coming in. So definitely go ahead and fill out those brackets. So we're going to go ahead and get to our guest today. Like Nikki mentioned, we have sports agent Rob Roche uh, join us today. Hi, Rob. Hey, Nikki. How, How are you? Doing? Good. How, How are you guys are you? doing? Good. I'm doing really good. good. Thanks for coming on for a little bit. I know you're going to be gracious enough. Give us about 15 minutes of your time. I do appreciate it. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. How's the show going so far? It's going good. We're just uh, trying to figure out who should, who I should pick for my final four in my bracket because I started the rush hour bracket, but I still haven't filled it out. So I'm trying to copy <laughs> off of everybody else. Okay. Who do you got, Nikki? I, I didn't do mine yet, but oh, okay. Damien, tell, <laughs> tell Rob who you have. So my final four, I have Alabama, Marquette, Houston and UConn in my final four. And I got Alabama winning it all. Okay. No, that sounds good. I like UConn, Northeast. That's good. Okay. No doubt okay, about so. it. Yeah. Well, maybe you got to play with us. I know. Seriously. <laughs> all right. So I have to just, I got to start with this. I know that you and Craig played ball together, correct? Yes. Craig Santucci. Yes. Yes. Okay. Definitely. So I'd like to know who owned who in practice. Cause I'm getting conflicting stories. Here. <laughs> it all depends what, what version we're looking at, right? If we're going to go goal line one-on-ones, I don't know. I might've, might've had him at that point. Right. Okay. But, uh, but Craig was, you know, he was a good player. Definitely yeah. a good player out there for TCNJ, the, the Lions. 
Yes. About that. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So funny. All right. So he'll be happy yeah. about that. I was looking for <laughs> connecting, you know, with Greg. I haven't talked no, about we'll that. Have to, we'll have to give Craig his credit for being a good player for sure. And when you were in college playing football, is that when you knew you wanted to be a sports agent? Or is that something that came earlier in life that you realized this is what you wanted to do? Yeah, Damien, you know, I definitely, you know, I wanted to be connected with the sport because I love football is my passion. It was something I always loved doing. And, you know, it was one of the first things I felt that I was really good at was football. And so I knew I wanted to be connected with it in some some way. Playing Division three football, you know, you didn't have much of an opportunity to go to the next level or anything like that. So my thought process was, okay, I could actually be an agent, represent football players, and help them, guide them in their path and you know for their career, and stay connected with the sport, and also make you know good living as well. And uh, to my benefit, that's all rung true, you know, to this day. So, uh, but yeah, it was that was a conscious choice back in college when I was playing at TC and J. Yeah, definitely thinking that way. Do I have to ask you, did Craig have that full head of hair in college too? Yeah, he had long he did. hair. Okay. Yeah, he did have long hair. And yeah. I'll tell you what, I had a, I was rocking a pretty good mullet back then too. Oh. Well. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. Party in the back, right? They call that business up front, party in the yeah, back. Yeah, business up front. Oh, you know what? We got to see these college pictures. Someone yes. uh, need, dig I them out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's funny. Yeah, definitely. You, that'd yeah. be quite interesting, I'm sure. That we would love to see that. I really, really would love to see that. Put that on a rush for next week. So, Rob, I know you you're an attorney, right? Or your background was in law. So, yeah, did you I feel like some people think that, you know, coming from a law background and then starting a sports agency, like maybe they think that doesn't make sense. But to me, I feel like you connected the dots. So was it I'm playing sports? I'm playing football. I love this game. I have a law background. Hey, I'm going to marry these two together and, and do what I love. Was that kind of the thought yeah, process no, a little 100%, bit? percent Nikki. That was the thought process right from Jump Street. And the reason I went to law school was to be able to be able to get that, that I guess that background and knowledge of how to negotiate contracts. Yeah. And so I, I knew that that would be very helpful in regards to doing that business. So that's why I went to law school. I went to Seton Hall Law down in Newark and uh, was on a sports law journal there. They had there and, you know, wrote an article on agents that got published and I was somewhat on my way. So, but yeah, definitely, you know, it's all contracts. What, what I do is all contracts. It's, it's actually, you know, connecting with people, number one, and then negotiating deals and negotiating yeah. contracts. So the law stuff has been very helpful. I can tell you that. But you don't have to be a lawyer to to actually be an agent. I'll tell you that. But that I would imagine that that's one of the values that you can bring to your clients, right? Yeah, hundred percent. Okay. Yes, yeah. no doubt. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. Um, so. Let's talk about negotiating a contract, right? Because you know we are a Giants based show, and there is so much going on about Daniel Jones and switching agencies. Um, I know you probably don't know the ins and outs and can't say too much, but just at the basis of a negotiation, have you ever entered one where the client comes in and originally asked for less money? Originally asked for less money. No one ever had that experience. Okay. Because, I mean, if you listen to some of these people, they're like, oh, well, you know, Daniel Jones wanted to come in and he wanted less money. And I'm going... I negotiate contracts for a living as well. I have never had that happen to me right. in over a decade, but okay. <laughs> well, if that did happen, Nikki, and you're in, in the room with the client, you, you, you know, you throw them a look like, yeah. you, you know, zip it. What are you talking about? You know, please enough. Yeah. 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 Uh, so is there any light that you can shed on what, you know, I, and I know you specialize and we'll get into, you know, kickers and punters, but just any position, especially in football, is there any, can you shed any light on what those negotiations look like on both sides? Yeah. I mean, I'll tell you like, no matter what position you're negotiating a contract for in the NFL for a player, you're all, you know, it's all the same parameters you're dealing with. It's the same collective bargain agreement that you deal for a D tackle or as in regards to a kicker. So, you know, it's, it's the same process where, you talk to the team, you know, you try to get together, find out where they're coming from, what they're looking for. And, you know, you know where you want to go in the deal. And you got to marshal up all the all the comps. You know, you get the comps in terms of what other players that guy's position has been paid and what you think, where you think he fits in that market scheme. Now, if you have the top dog, shall I say, 
if you had a top dog in free agency, it's a different story. Okay. Because then you're trying to set the market for what the value, his value should be. So, you know, it's really a couple of different dynamics. And I found some of the best things to do is when you're negotiating with teams, stuff like that, is just sit back and listen. You know, if you listen and zip your mouth a little bit, they're going to tell you what they're looking for sooner or later. Um, so, you know, that's part of the process and it can be stressful. You know, it can be stressful because, you know, it's, it's funny because whenever you're negotiating a deal, team will tell you, um, you know, we'll call you back next week. Okay. Okay. And I always tell my clients that, okay, they said they're going to call next week, but just be prepared that they're not going to call next week. <laughs> <laughs> this is not going to happen. So, you know, when they call, when we actually meet again, we'll deal with it. And, you know, um, I think there's, there's always some point in the con in, in negotiation, Nikki and Damien, that you got to rattle the cage a little bit. Yeah. You, know, you got to rattle the cage. You know, it's not all like, you know, peaches and cream when you're negotiating a contract, yeah. but respectfully, you got to rattle the cage once or twice in the negotiation process uh, to try to get your guy what, what do you think, you know, they deserve and what the market sh dictates that they should be paid. I feel like for kickers, so it's kind of like that position is so black and white to me, right? You either make the kick or you miss the kick, right? Mm -hmm. So it kind of feels like, I, I don't know, that feels like a very difficult position to kind of, you know, negotiate. So what is, what is that? Like a straight percentage or is there any, is there any value placed on how they are in a clutch situation? It almost kind of feels like a catch 22 a little bit, you know? Yeah, no, you're hundred percent on point. Um, clutch kicks are the most, one of the most important things you go for in a negotiation. When you're okay. Doing deals. Yeah. It's the clutch kicks and it's the kicks, you know, two minutes left and a half kicks that actually change the score of the game. And so when I go into negotiation with a player kicker position, you know, I have all that data, you know, and that this guy has, you know, kicked, you know, four or five game winners for you this year. And he's actually, you know, with Tucker, you know, he's never missed a kick in the fourth quarter, so to speak. No. Right. No. So that's a really positive thing to bring out to the table. OK, yeah. I can tell you that. Um, but, you know, what you're fighting against with regards to teams that you're negotiating with for kickers and specials, you know, by whole, you know, by and large, is that sometimes teams don't put the value that they should on the specialist position because, you know, I'm always beating the drum that, OK, how do you win football games? Score most points, right? Yeah. Who on your teams most likely scores the most points? It's a kicker. Yeah. You know, so that's where that, you know, you try to really – some teams value that position and those those positions so much more than others. Um, and it's it's the goal is to actually bring out that value and show what a difference – bottom line, I tell the teams, you know, when it comes time for to win the game – or lose a game, who do you want out there? Who do yeah. you want out there? Justin Tucker. All of us want Justin Tucker <laughs> out there. Long, right? No matter where the ball is placed. <laughs> All um, day long. <laughs> you know, so those are the things you look at. But it's no different than negotiating any other contract. I mean, I've done deals for, you know, D-tackles mm -hmm. and uh, wide receivers and stuff like that. And it's all the same parameters. You're still yeah. doing the same CBA and you still got teams. Teams still don't want to pay you any money. No. Bottom line, right? They want to get no, your guy as cheap as possible. Cheap as possible. They don't. But, I, you know, the one thing I think we can all agree on is the good teams that do it well, they have good kickers, right? Yeah. Because you need yeah. that. How many times have we watched a game? And as a Giants fan, please, uh, you know, losing games, 61 yard field goals and stuff. I mean, yeah. but that to me, that's the value. If you've got a reliable kicker, I mean, we don't all have, you know, Justin Tucker out there, but if you have someone of that value. And the analytics can tell you, hey, no, go for it, you know, like kick the field goal or he can make this. To me, um, I feel like if the good teams, if you notice, they do that well. Right. Because, you know, you have a good kicker. It usually translates, I would say, on average to like two wins a year, possibly, mm -hmm. you know, for a team. When it comes down to that crunch time, right. you look at the teams of Super Bowl. You had the Chiefs, you had Bucker, and you got um, the Eagles with Jake Elliott. Yeah. Both, you know, top 15, top 10 kickers in the league. And that's not, but not a coincidence in terms of that their teams do usually do perform well. Yeah. 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 We're, we're pretty clutch here at Graham Gano. Great. I'll tell you what, yeah. Graham's done really well. He's done really well. I've had a couple of giant kickers in my day and uh, Graham has actually done great. Clutch. He, believe it or not, he had the 
the highest average field goal make this year of like 44 yards. Yes. All right. Finally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got a good one. We got a good one. We're hang on to him. What do you yeah. got, D? So uh, one thing that I was interested in is that we always hear about the money, right? The total money, guaranteed money. But lately, there's been some negotiations or some contracts where some other things have come out, right? When you had the example of Kyler Murray, where there was a big thing about the whole thing of his contract, about how much time he had to study. Have you ever dealt with other things outside of the money being in the contract where it felt kind of weird or it was something that you thought, my client, I have to fight for my client not to have to do this? Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you, the, the, the biggest fight is always, I can tell you, Damien, is, is guaranteed money. Okay. Right. I mean, it's kind of vanilla I'd say, you know, yeah. um, but it's guaranteed money and it's cash flow. You want to get that money within the first two years because most contracts in the NFL, after those first two years, they're going to bop you. Yeah. You know, they're going to cut you if you got a high cap number and you got no more guaranteed money, especially if your play goes down a bit. So yes. my focus and goal in negotiating deals for my guys is always to get that guarantee, fully guaranteed money. So now there's always that funny money where they say, oh, he got hundred million dollars guaranteed. You got to ask them what the next follow-up question is, David, what's fully guaranteed for skill cap and injury. That's yeah. the main oh. question. That's the main litmus test of whether or not you get a good deal or not. Yeah. Okay. But nothing crazy. I'm trying to think nothing really crazy uh, in terms of different contract asks. So yeah. everybody studies nothing, you know, nobody has to be <laughs> held accountable for studying. That was actually, I've never heard that one. That was a, that was a new one. <laughs> Right. Yeah. And you know what? You, you can understand that obviously that was put in there for a reason. Yeah. Right? yeah. That, didn't, that was not, no, that was not like by accident, obviously. Not standard yeah. language, correct? Not your standard boilerplate, yeah. you know, NFL contract language. That was, there was reasons why that was put in there, obviously. Yeah. 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 But he's an, he's a Cardinal, right? You know, it's yeah. NFC. You, you guys are Giants fans, correct? <laughs> well, no, I'm, I'm the first Rush member that's not a Giants fan, I yes. believe. Okay. <laughs> so, Who's your team? Yeah. Dude? Who's I'm a Saints fan. What is it? Saints. Saints. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, that's a good organization too. They they win a lot down there. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully we can get back to it this year. We'll definitely be talking about it here on Rush Hour as the season gets uh, closer and closer for sure. And when you are an agent and you're trying to get players – that you want to represent. Do you ever come across players who feel like they can do the job that you do? And what do you tell them if they say, I'll represent myself and I can negotiate my contracts. What are your responses to those type of questions? Well, who could you possibly be referring to? Lamar, <laughs> right? Lamar. We're talking about Lamar. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it has, it does come up once in a while, I guess, yeah. you know, recruiting, recruiting players and stuff like that. But, you know, my whole take on that and the way I answer that question, D, is that, you have a very finite window to maximize your earnings as an NFL player. The average career is three years max. So you have a three-year window or, you know, whatever it is to maximize your earnings. Are you going to risk it by being like a 3%, you know, uh, to, by cutting 3% that you're going to pay the agent, you know, to not have right. a professional do it. It's like when you're buying a house, like you're buying a house, I hate to make the analogy, but you say you're buying a million dollar house. You're going to, you know, negotiate, the, tr the contract and do the transaction by yourself. You don't know. You hire an attorney to actually yeah. handle that. It's one of the most important purchases in your life. Just like when you're negotiating an NFL contract, you know, there's millions of dollars on the table that you actually have to account for. And players representing themselves, you know, some, some guys have done it and done okay. But you know what? Why take the risk? You know, the, the risk is not really worth the reward in terms of saving 3% on that deal, you yeah. know, long-term. Yeah. You know, so, but to answer that question, you know, your, your specific question about that, yes, it does come up and you just got to walk the client and the parent and the parents through it and say, Hey, listen, this is the value I bring. This is the value I bring to the table. And you show them, like I show them like, you know, the deals are done for Tucker in terms of how we got to those deals. Okay. How we actually had a plan in place from the time I signed and coming out of university of Texas mm. to when, you know, his first restricted free agent, we didn't sign that deal. We played on the tender. Then we wait till you got franchised. It's just, there's a whole like process and a thought process behind it rather than just saying, okay, we're going to get this contract and, you know, lock him in for six years, which would make no sense. Yeah. Yeah. If that makes sense. 
How, okay, so yeah, we, we all want to know, how did the relationship with Justin Tucker form? Yeah, you know, funny thing how that formed, Nikki. I actually, you know, when I recruited, that was back like, what, 11 years ago, I guess yeah. now, 12 years ago, maybe 13 years ago, because Justin's been in the league about 11 years. So, you know, back then at that point, okay, I would send out letters to guys I was recruiting. So I sent Justin and his, to his parents' house, sent him letters every week based upon his performance, how he did it, Texas that week and stuff like that. And so I never get, didn't get a response back, but like, so I'm on the treadmill at Lifetime Fitness on a Sunday afternoon, like around two o'clock. <laughs> and I get this call comes in from Texas, from Austin, Texas, right? I'm like, all right, you know, who's calling me from Austin, Texas on Sunday at two o'clock? So I'm like, all right, I'll answer it. And so I said, hey, you know, they said, Rob Roche. And he said, uh, Hey, Mr. Roach, this is uh, Justin Tucker from the University of Texas. And you've been sending letters to my family, to my parents' house about representing me. And I wanted to talk to you about possibly work with me in the future. And Bama, that's how it started. I was on the treadmill at Lifetime Fitness. No yeah. way. Yeah. What a cool story. See, but that just goes to show you got to have perseverance, right? You, you just got to. You just got to get out there and you just got to put yourself out there and you just got to go for it and be persistent sometimes, right? You got to keep swinging. You got to be able to that swing. You have to. Yeah. And then, of course, it just rolls from there. I imagine when you started, I know it was the specialty kickers, punters, and, and you do other positions now. But I imagine it was something like maybe a kicker was the first client and word of mouth. And it kind of just grew yeah. from there, right? Very yeah, tight. Yeah, it. 100% yeah. on point, Nikki. I actually, my first client was Neil Rackers. And he was a kicker. He was came out of University of Illinois. And I remember I was like 27 years old at the time, right? And I'm all suited up meeting his parents at St. Charles, Missouri, and uh, sat down with Neil and his mom and dad. And, and uh, the one question he asked, which was interesting, I found out later on was the, the key question. He said, who, who else are you here to see? Okay. And I didn't understand the question. I said, what do you mean? Who else am I here to see? I'm here to see you. He said, no, you're in St. Charles, Missouri. Who else are you here to see while you're on this trip? I'm like, boss, I'm like, I'm all here to see you. I said, this is it. I said, we're going to have this meeting. I'm going to go back to the hotel. I'm going to hop on a plane tomorrow morning and go back to Jersey. And so, no, you know, the way Neil was, Neil was sat back, like, okay, right? Yeah. But that was it. That was like, you know, you had that hello moment, right? That was it. Yeah. In the terms of, he said, you know what? You're the only one that came out there to see me and nobody else, right? So like, That's it. that was a good indication that I was going to be that, you know, zeroed in on him. And Neil got drafted. You know, my first year out, my first client was Nick Rackers. He got drafted by the Bengals. And right. Neil's friend was Shane Graham. Shane wasn't happy with the guy he had at that point, so he came over to me. And then we you know Josh Brown, Kyle Larson, whole bunch of whole bunch of guys. But it was all word of mouth. It's like any other business. Yeah. If you do a good job for somebody, they're gonna tell somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. How it is? It's like yeah. the age old way to get business, right? Yeah. Do a good job for the first few clients, and it just starts rolling from there. Stop rolling. Yeah. How how would you say since you've started in the business, how's the market changed for special positions like kickers, like punters, from where it was to to where it is today? Is there anything specific that sticks out to you other than nobody ever wants to pay? Yeah, right. Yeah, that. <laughs> but you know, in terms of the market, well, you know, I'll give you two things, two points. You know, with regards to uh, the kicker position, nowadays they're so specialized. Okay, mm -hmm. so back when I was started out, they weren't that specialized. There was, you know, kickers who actually played other positions, but then they, they kicked as well. Same with long snappers. Now these kids are coming up through the ranks, specifically working on kicking, punting, and snapping. And so it's so much more specialized with all the great camps that they have out yeah. there for the young kids. So it's so much more specialized. And in turn, now the guys, like back when Rackers was there, I think his first year since Cincinnati, he was like 75%, and he stayed on. This in this league now, there's so much the kickers, there's so much a higher level that if you're 75 percent, you really got a shot of getting released. You know, that's crazy, so like, right? Yeah. yeah. So like they're kicking so much more efficiently and so much deeper. Like their kicks are so much further back. Like to, you know, Justin made you know his, his long long kick there to, to uh, set the record. But like you know, on yeah. on average, they're kicking a lot further distances. Um, yeah. Terms of contract for for uh, for deals, um, market wise, it's gotten better, you know, because the teams actually have some teams, as you said, Nikki, they see the value. They see the value in having a guy who they can turn to 
at the end of the game and they don't have to lose sleep over it. All right. There's value in that. hundred percent. You know, that peace of mind, right? Yeah. I always tell GMs or contract negotiators I'm dealing with, with my guy, you and your team, your general manager, you can put your head on the pillow at night and not have to worry about it. That the guy's going to miss wide right or, you know, not do too like well. Like the Dallas kicker. So he had a rough year. <laughs> I mean, yeah, as a Giants fan, I was like, oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah. But I imagine that you get you can get your in your head with that too. Yeah, Even no, no, it's a, it's a it's a tough it's a tough position, you know. Because as you said initially, it's very finite. It's black or white. Yeah. Either you make the kick or you don't make the kick. You know, and and there's a lot of things that go into it. You know, you got the snap, you got the hold, you got the wind conditions, you got people got to block up front, and you got people trying to block the kick, stuff like that. Yeah. So there's a lot of external factors in there that kickers really can't control sometimes. Yeah. But still plays into the fact of whether the ball goes in or not. Yeah. Right. You have to do their job at the end of the day. Yeah, do you man. have anything else for Rob? I have one last question before I know he's got to jump. You have anything else? No, we're going ahead and get to your last question. Oh, right well, here. my last one is, I mean, you touched on it with, with the college kids. I mean, just in general for any sport, as these kids are coming into the professional world, what advice would you give them? So they're going to enter this world where they're getting so many things thrown at them, right? Deals, offers, money. Yeah. And I, I, I would think that one of the key things would be try to surround yourself with people who have your best interests at heart. I know that's easier said than done, but you know, you're what, 22 years old and coming into this world is kind yeah. of probably quite shocking. Is there any advice that you could give to these athletes who are transitioning into the professional world? Yeah, I always try to tell players, you know, stay focused, you know, stay focused. There's a lot of external things off the field and stuff like that to come at you. But mm -hmm. if you stay focused on your preparation for what you need to do on the field, and the key thing is, if you don't play well on the field, all the other stuff is going to go away. It's going to go away. So you got to stay yeah. focused on playing well on the field and being focused. The key thing is, is a focus because some players, they get drafted, right? They get drafted high. And then they think they made it, right? They don't have to work hard right. anymore. You know, you got to bring that work ethic that brought you, that got you to that point, you know, all the way through your career until you're done playing. So yeah. main thing I would say is, you know, just be focused on the field, what you got to do on the field. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank yeah. you so much, Rob, for yeah. giving yeah. us a little bit of time tonight. I really appreciate it. Open invite for you if you ever feel like coming on. We'll get Craig on and then like we'll just right, sit back good. and watch Let's you two like up. go at it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Nikki. Thank Thanks, you for nice meeting you both. Have All good right. Night. Have a good night. Appreciate yep, it. Too. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye. Well, that was awesome. It was. That was a great insight into the world of being an agent. And I love how you broke down how their value is and how important it is to have someone like that especially you know that I recently bought a house. So that that, that analogy hit home for me for sure of the, difficult, <laughs> the difficulties of having to go through that process. Uh, yep. So you definitely need somebody there for that, for sure. Uh, we got yep. a special shout out to you, Nikki, from an entire rugby team. Oh, Tuto, <laughs> what's up? Yes, this is so Tuto's rugby team in Italy. Anyone who's joining us in now, I know probably like where Spartan Mike. Yes, he's still co-host with us, but don't forget he's on the draft show. So you know, he's doing that with truth. So once that's done, you'll see the three of us a lot more. So if you're just jumping in, you don't know who Damien is. He is my old co-host from third and three podcast. We had worked together for several years and now he is the newest member of the rush team. He booted Danny. Danny only got to be the new member for like a month and then he came <laughs> in and that was it. So Tuto comes to us all the way from Italy. I think it's, he says his family's still here out in the uh, Princeton area. He's also the one that requests the hair shaking all the time. The <laughs> so, yeah, so to, obviously he really loves Nikki. Hopefully he likes me as well. I, I think it's going to be for different reasons. That he's going to like me and he likes Nikki, but it's going to be yeah. all right. Gonna, yeah, we'll <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Well, that, but that was awesome. I really love when somebody can just kind of be down to earth, you know, yeah. during an interview um, and just kind of give like really great insight. I, I love to know like the how to, and I know he can only tell us so much, but um, yeah. I hope that you guys enjoyed that. That was a lot of fun. All right. We have so much news to get into. I know I had yeah. to like take a breath because I'm looking at like 
I wrote notes and I was like, just talk about like the key things. And I'm like, well, there's like 25 key things that we yeah, could uh, sure. that we could talk about. But since I know most of you are Giants fans, let's do it. Waller to the Giants. I'm calling it right now, March 15th. It is 7.36 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Jones to Waller is going to be the fantasy dynamic duo to look out oh. for. Okay, I like that. I yep. love the move for you guys to get Darren Waller. I know he's dealt with some injury, you know, just some pesky injuries over the last couple of years. But when that dude's right, he is very dynamic, very good. And you guys, that's one of the things you guys are missing was that kind of that dynamic tight end. Uh, so I think that he'll be a very good addition to you guys for sure. Oh, man, I, I just I can't wait. So Bellinger is a great blocking tight end. Um, there was like oh, a little bit of stuff going on today, back and forth, uh, on Twitter, but you know, let's, let's try to be like one big happy family. He's a great blocking tight end and Waller is going to be really dynamic and he's going to be a great safety blanket for Daniel Jones, especially since we still don't really have a wide receiver yet. Yeah. That's something okay. you guys, you guys still are trying to add. Maybe it'll come in the draft. I'm not I don't sure know, but you that. all need to stop sending me number 19. Like Thielen, I think Juju wears number 19. I'm scarred with Kenny Galladay's number 19. So just give me a minute. Like, I'm not ready. I'm not ready for that. Oh, Danny's here. Danny, do you want to come on for the last 20 minutes? Let, let D know. We'll send you the link. Okay, right? yeah, definitely, for sure. You guys love so, Danny. Yes, but I definitely love that move of Darren Waller for you guys, for sure. Yes. Um, I'm telling you right now, I told you guys Saquon last year and he had a hell of a fantasy year I'm telling mm -hmm. you right now, Jones to Waller and make sure you stay here on rush hour all year to hear me say how much I was right, because I have <laughs> nothing more than to tell everybody that I was right about everything. Uh, let's move on. I don't know if we've had any news yet, but is Aaron Rodgers a jet or what are we doing here? So, from what I hear, they're just trying to work out the trade details. He has said and made it, I guess, a declaration uh, that he will be a Jet. And now the okay. Jets are working out the trade with the Packers. It's going to be interesting to see what the Jets have to give up in that trade. Because if they have to give up, let's say, two first-round picks, mm -hmm. uh, I would be like, why wouldn't you give that up for a 26-year-old former MVP that's out there just dangling in the wind, waiting for a team to sweep him off his feet? And Lamar Jackson, when you're doing this for a 39-year-old who's already demanding that you bring on his receivers that he didn't like, but now he does like. Yeah. Uh, like he <laughs> yeah. So for me, I, I think that obviously Aaron Rodgers is an all-time great. You get why the Jets want to make this move because they haven't had a truly great quarterback in a very long time. Uh, so yeah. to have a great quarterback to add to this roster that last year, even with the quarterback struggles, for a certain time there, like the Jets were going to be real contenders. And then, the, of course, the quarterback struggles just caught up with them. So I think that adding Aaron Rodgers should make them better. But there's no guarantee that 39-year-old Aaron Rodgers is going to get back to being an MVP-level quarterback. Let's yeah. not get fooled by Tom Brady. Most people can't do that. Like, once you hit that 39-40 range, the decline is real. The cliff yeah. is coming. So hopefully for the okay. Jets fans out there, you know, the cliff doesn't hit this year. Hopefully, you know, he's not just – you know, just out there just to get all the attention he wants to get. And the next thing you know, it's done. So yeah. I think that this, the Jets need to be cautious of, is this the real Aaron Rodgers we're getting or is it just an old Aaron Rodgers we're getting? Danny, I sent you the link, check your email, and then you can pop in with us for a little bit. Uh, my thing with the Jets is, you know, they're, they're acting like they're just a quarterback away. Yeah. I, I mean, listen, they had a great year. I think they have a lot of great young talent. Um, you know, so maybe if they get some more pieces around him, maybe, uh, I just can't stand it anymore. I just, I'm over Aaron Rodgers. I'm over the darkness. Like I, I just like, he said he went in the darkness, 90% want retire 10% he was coming back. And I'm just, we do this every year with him. I'm coming back. I'm not, I'm coming back. I'm not. And it was funny today on Twitter. I asked you guys to tell me who's a bigger attention whore and drama queen than Aaron Rodgers. And that you couldn't say me. So that, you know, that was great. <laughs> um, but everybody said Brett Favre. And they really are like parallels of each other. Yeah, for it's sure. Great. Now, it's definitely history repeating itself, for sure. A lot of deja vu in, in both of these situations. Now, hopefully for Packers fans, they get the deja vu of Jordan Love being great, just like Aaron Rodgers was great after Brett Favre. But 
with Jordan Love, we haven't really seen him yeah. uh, show any signs of greatness yet. So that's going to be very interesting on Green Bay's part. Uh, earlier, I showed the comment that Green Bay will play hardball with the Jets. Do you think that, you know, two first round picks, like what do you think the actual compensation will be for Green Bay to trade away Aaron Rodgers? I mean, I feel like at least that, right? Has to be at least. I mean, they. I'm. I'm with you, Joe. I mean, they are going to play hardball. It, apparently, that's kind of what's holding it up right now. Um. Oh, the boss is here, Danny. Everybody's sitting here's <laughs> boss. So, what's up? What's going on? Going Danny? on. I'm the boss. All right. Make sure everybody. <laughs> tells everybody, Craig said, that. everybody said you are. Don't tell Craig. But. <laughs> Everybody in the chat on? said said you were uh, a bot. Thank you, Darius. You loved my poll. Who was the bigger drama queen and attention whore? It was <laughs> A. Aaron Rodgers. B. Can't say me. C. You guys come up with something else. So that Nikki, that was Nikki fun. didn't like my response. It was. I said you got jokes today because he said <laughs> <"Hey>, you. <laughs> <laughs> Damien, nice to finally meet you. Talk to you in video. How's it going? How it's going good, man. Yes, yeah, so it is finally nice to meet you and you know meet all of the rush team hopefully eventually i meet everybody on cam as we get to talk here and definitely we got a, a comment from joe here can't see the jets having any leverage that's a good comment because the jets did give away all their leverage because they made it so plain and clear that it was aaron Rodgers or bust right. so mm-hmm. now green bay can sit back and say you guys have already declared that you want aaron Rodgers. you got to give us everything like we need everything you got your firstborn your social yeah. security number, everything that you could yeah. give us. Give we us need all day. that to give up Aaron Rodgers because you already have declared that you got him without having him. So now you put Green Bay in the driver's seat. Um, the weirdest thing for me since uh, – I don't know how busy Nikki was today, but um, listening to the fan and going through everybody's socials that are big Jeff fans in the area, it was like they didn't they didn't sign him yet. So everybody's acting like we they got them. And it was just like, not yet. I know you're excited. And me being mm-hmm. a Met fan, that happened with Carlos Correa earlier in the offseason for the Mets. So yeah. most of them are Met fans. So I don't know. They they haven't learned. But obviously getting Aaron Rodgers is going to be huge. But it's like it didn't happen yet. Everybody needs to, like, let it happen. Chill. Chill, Biscuit. Yeah. Like, wait, like I told you all with Daniel <laughs> Jones, everybody chill um, and, and chill on the DMs because we're not – Listen, we, we, we get information, right? But I, And I love all of you. I really do. I don't have information on every single team, though. So Trust me, I, I bother Nikki as much as everybody, <laughs> and she doesn't even tell me. So <laughs> She's like, you. Me. she goes, you have to find it on your own. So yeah. hey, Nikki's not telling me. You, she's not telling anybody else. So. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, so I have a couple other notables. I'll run down the list. You guys stop me when there's one that you really want to talk about. Um, Cowboys released uh, Zeke. Looks like Tampa Bay might be in play, that they are interested. I know a friend of the show, Evan, said he loves that move for depth. Any thoughts on that one? I mean, if you watched any Cowboy game last year, he literally clearly didn't have it left in the tank. And for whatever reason, they didn't finally realize until the end of the year that Pollard was their guy. Yeah. So... Um, being at the giant cowboy game last year, seeing him in person, the two of them in person, it was nine day, even though that was week three, it was just like Zeke doesn't have it anymore. Like he has enough, but to be the every down cow, a cowbell running back, he definitely doesn't have it. No. Yeah. I agree with Dan. He's no longer the every down guy, but I still think he could be productive. And, and Um, And he definitely was. Yeah. Yeah. He definitely was still productive, but like you said, I don't know why it took them so long to realize that Pollard was the guy who should be getting more carries yeah. than Zeke. And so with Tampa Bay, I'm pretty sure he'll go there and be the change of pace guy. I don't know who they're going, else they're going to get. He would need another guy as well. Um, but he could be a good pickup for him for sure. Um, I don't know if you guys are following, but I saw the ESPN alert um, that Miles Sanders went to the – Panthers I didn't see how much all right let's talk about let's talk about the Panthers because they also got Hayden Hurst Andy Dalton yeah so the Panthers are are trying right they're trying I don't know let's go to the NFC South connoisseur we said that that (laughs) whole division can we get two toe yeah I cleaned up thank you yeah I long story thank you Tuda. oh what do you say oh you cleaned up you look more handsome thank you Nikki yeah Nikki's the rush queen Nikki's the best Shave yeah, your hair. Okay. Yeah, I was expecting yeah. my wife to have the baby, so I right. shaved 
but next week. Soon. <laughs> Mon- yeah, soon, right? So soon. I, I had to be ready. I didn't want to have scruff for my new son. But yes, thank you, Tutho. All right. So, <laughs> so, all right. So Carolina's trying to put something together there. Um, maybe Tampa Bay gets it together. What's going on with the Saints, D? Did I? Well, I saw a comment earlier that we picked up Jamal Williams from the oh, Detroit Lions. That's uh, huge, okay. man. Yeah, that's awesome. a, that's a good pickup for sure, especially with Alvin Kamara having some legal trouble heading into this year. So he may, if we don't release him, he may still miss some games with suspension. So having a running back like Jamal Williams, who stepped in in a major way with Swift having injuries last year for Detroit, I think is a big pickup for the Saints. Uh, also, you know, we got Derek Carr. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of a lot of people are saying, what would be different? about Derek Carr in New Orleans compared to Vegas, right? And a big difference is a defense. He's right. never had a defense. <laughs> he never had a defense with the Raiders, and he will have one in New Orleans. So I think that's going to be the big difference there. We also uh, renegotiated contracts to keep – I was surprised. James Winston is going to stay with the Saints as well. I was very surprised by that move. Um, but maybe the market was slim for him, so he Probably. decided to stay with us as a backup. And we also got to renegotiate with Michael Thomas – who obviously the last three years has been very injury prone, but when healthy yeah. is a monster. So hopefully, you know, we could throw him in a fountain of health somewhere and he can come back, <laughs> <laughs> come back this year, healthy Take for us. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So uh, the NFC South is very busy. You mentioned Carolina. They did trade for the number one overall pick as well. Yeah. Along with all the other moves they made ticking. Thank you for taking Andy Dalton off our hands. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, he is just like, what is he, Ryan Fitzpatrick 2.0? I mean, he's just yeah. wrapping it up on all these teams and just does yeah. nothing. But hey, you know. yeah, hey man, keep getting them checks, Andy Dalton. I'm just I glad you're no bag. longer. What can you do? Yeah, I would, no longer I would, with the Saints. I would be in. Yeah. I would be trying to get my bag. Oh, Cold's in the house. Love Cold. He's got the best snarky joke. It's like, you know, <laughs> like my, my type of people there. Uh, so your boy DT Henny is going to the Falcons. Yeah, I think that's a good move for the Falcons to pick him up as a backup QB. He's a solid guy. If the young guy isn't ready or struggles, you know that T. Henney could come in and do a good job for you there. Um, But as a team, they're still so far away. So it's going to be interesting to see what they do. And the fact that they weren't in on Lamar Jackson kind of surprised me as well, that they came out right away like, oh, we're not interested. It was kind of interesting. So maybe they really believe. Yeah, maybe they really believe in Riddler. So we'll see what, what happens there. With them, but T. Henny's a good backup quarterback for sure. Danny, what what do you think is going on with this whole Lamar thing? Because I feel like at first, every team, including the Falcons, they were like, "No, we're in. We want to make a play. Everybody wants to." Then all of a sudden, it's like, "Nah, we, hmm. we don't want to. We don't want to touch him." Hmm. I wonder hmm. what it is. Hmm. I, okay. Well, <laughs> yeah. What are your thoughts? Everybody says hmm. they, they like your thoughts and takes. Um. Whatever could it be? <laughs> honestly, there's something fishy. Let's let's all be real. Um, yeah, yeah. they're going to cover it up saying we want the guy for at least the five year contract, obviously cheaper. But when someone of Lamar's caliber is on the open market, you, you got to suck it up, suck it up and get the two first rounds. You, you just got to, um, I, I, I'm in the chat. I think, does he hurt himself by not having an agent? Probably. Um, that's where I think he, he goes wrong in this certain situation. And we obviously don't know what's true or not with the original contract negotiations, but if those original contract negotiations that leaked out were true, then obviously he looks like an idiot for not signing it. And then the ones he leaked out today, obviously the Ravens don't look good. So it's really, he said, he said situation right now, um, one of my good friends is a Ravens fan and he's obviously distraught. And I know you have someone important in your family, Nikki, that likes them too. So, <laughs> um, yeah, no, uh, it's very weird. Like your, your MVP quarterback and the, their, the team that he plays for isn't showing him love is very, very weird. It, it's weird to me. I feel like, and, and what is their GM doing? Didn't he come out and say like, well, if I had good wide receivers or something, they wouldn't get hurt. Like I just D if they, they let Lamar go. I mean, you're essentially just blowing this team up, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, of course it would, it would be the biggest mistake. I think a franchise maybe has ever made. If you let a 26 year old MVP quarterback who at the least is top eight in the league, and yeah. you can argue top five, but at least top eight. So you, those guys don't grow on trees. And the way that he affects your offense, 
Look at the Eagles last year. I know this is a Giants podcast. No, no, no. We, we're, we're fair. About we're, it. we're around the league podcast. Yeah, Come on. We're, we're very fair about it. But when you look at the, the Eagles last year and Jalen Hurts, what he did, the impact he had because he had receivers, right? So imagine Lamar Jackson with an A.J. Brown, a Devonta Smith, Dallas Goddard, a very good defense, and what he could do. And the fact that Lamar Jackson hasn't had that and the Ravens have been winning the whole time he's been a quarterback shows you his immense value, right? And the fact that you're not willing to give him the fully guaranteed deal or give him more guaranteed money than a Kyler Murray or a Russell Wilson got seems very strange. So I agree with Dan that something's going on. You don't want to say the C word. You don't want to say collusion. Uh, but I, I feel like there is maybe an agreement that's made between the, between the owners that I, there's not going to be another fully guaranteed contract given out and that they're yeah. already super mad at the Browns for giving Deshaun Watson well, that deal. Well, they don't the want Browns that are idiots for doing that. Yes. <laughs> they they yeah. ruined it for everybody, but, but they ruined everything. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're really idiots for doing that. Looking back on it. And then all the other quarterbacks that actually yeah. deserved it. Yeah. It's like, yep, you completely destroyed it. And then they're, they're going back on it now this year and reworking everything. So yeah, Just no, the they, Browns they, being the rounds and messing yeah. up everything. They ruined yeah. it for everybody. Uh, Jimmy G to Vegas. Do we like that? I. It is funny that the odds went down. Oh no, the odds went down. No, up. The odds went up after. Come on, Danny, you didn't even have the baby yet. Come on. The <laughs> odds went up from when they had De uh, Derek Carr to Jimmy G. So that's all you need to know about Vegas thinking about it. Hmm. Wow. I'm. I don't get it. I don't get why the odds will go up. Like, what does? No, no. Okay, so the odds went down. Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Like, I don't, I don't get why people would think this is an upgrade. Let me put it that way. I don't think Jimmy G, unless he's bringing uh, Nick Bosa and Fred Warner and all those guys in the suitcase with him, this is not, <laughs> and this is not an upgrade. Like, he's he's not bringing the 49ers defense with him to help him win games. <laughs> like, I don't get why people think this is a good move. And Shanahan's like, I understand running he's, offense, too. Yeah, What's especially that? there. They're running offense as well. So, unless he's handing the ball off and people are saying that – I have I put out a quote that I put from my podcast where I asked this question and said that the only way to upgrade is he brings 49ers defense with him. People are like, well, he's a winner. He's not a winner. They were winners. Like, right. <laughs> like he just happened to be the um, quarterback on the team at the, the time. Only, oh, the only, obviously, the only obvious thing is Mc, Mc, McDaniel is the head coach. So yeah, they have a previous relationship. That's the only Ooh. connection. That is yeah, and, and he obviously stinks as a head coach, but that's, that's another thing. So, and one know. of the people, one of the things I've seen is that uh, McDaniel's is more comfortable with Jimmy G. It's not the job of the players to make the coach more comfortable. The coach should make the players more comfortable. Yeah. So why are you getting players to make the coach more comfortable? That's working backwards. Like this whole move doesn't make any sense to me. And so, uh, some people are like, well, they're on the same level and he's cheaper. That doesn't help you. To have a cheaper <laughs> version of what you think is the same player, you're still going to be in the same spot. Like this move is at best a lateral move. And honestly, it might be a move that makes you worse, honestly. And in that division, man, you're basically mm. fighting with the Broncos for last place. Well, but yeah. yeah, but they got Sean Payton now, so I'm not. I, you know, I, their stock went up. No, I, I agree with you, but uh, let's talk about another team KC. whose stock has seemed to be on the rise, and now that they got David Montgomery, the Lions. I love this move. Actually, I love this for them. It's going to be interesting. Yeah. Do they trade Swift? Mm. They Swift has been somebody who they has don't been like. Swiftly, apparently, I yeah, don't get been, it. Yeah, he's been swiftly injured, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, he's very talented, but right. David Montgomery, I like that move for them. I was surprised that they let, you know, Jamal Williams go. So I don't know if they're going to be looking for another back to be that change of pace guy. Uh, mm. But I definitely like I Montgomery a lot. Available, so, you know, maybe. say it again. I heard Zeke's available. So <laughs> that's true. That's yeah. true. If the Buccaneers don't pick him up, that could be a, a good pickup as far as a Man, change of pace imagine guy. Imagine how slow. Oh, Fournette's a free agent, right? He, yeah, he, I think he asked okay. me to let go. Yes. You imagine that how slow that backfield is of Fournette <laughs> and Zeke. Yeah, that's that's not a no, say, that's not a change of pace. It's just no pace. Yeah, Nikki, that would be like having two Ron Dames on on the same backfield. I'm staying away from that in fantasy, Danny. I don't know if you watched the beginning of the show, but I opened I, I it. Yeah, where I said that 
Jones to Waller, I'm calling it right now, is going to be a dynamic. Oh, I did. Well. And I, and okay. I joked that was going to be my prop, uh, weekly prop bet for okay. our show next this season. Okay. Well, I always got to throw like one crazy prediction out there. Uh, Patrick Peterson to the Steelers. Uh, mm-hmm. That's uh, Isaiah Hodgins not torching him anymore. So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'll say he's, he's gonna be man. a stealer. They 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 magically reform into their old selves. So he'll he'll be his old self. Darius says the Raiders are a joke of a franchise. I want to ask you guys in the comments, who's the bigger joke of a franchise? The Raiders or the Commanders? They're kind of one of the same for me. They're just yeah. You know, Dar- oh, Darius, since you're here, how old are you that you didn't see the Tyree helmet catch? Because oh, he wow. tweeted at me, tweeted that at me last night. Well, we're didn't... not going to give Darius a hard time because Darius thinks I'm 30 years old. So, oh, okay. We Good love Darius guys. here. Okay. <laughs> Way to go, Darius. <laughs> we we love him. Um, of course, we have Nick Gates going to the Niners, which yeah, is that hurt. That hurt me hard. That that definitely hurt us over here in Giants Nation. But he's, but he's always going to be Rush family, though. Yeah, yeah, so it's going to be Rush family. <laughs> he appreciated me uh, shouting him out. But the show. biggest winner, I think, is the Bears, right? Right now, yeah. they got the two top uh, linebackers. <laughs> they cleaned up. Yeah. And they uh, got all those picks, so. Yeah, I love that move, trading number one pick, getting a number one wide receiver in DJ Moore along with the rest of those picks. Yeah. And I love that they're building around Justin Fields and giving him an actual chance to be a good passer because – Last year, their leading receiver was Cole Komet. That tells you enough. So, <laughs> <laughs> so now they have a real shot to have a real passing game next year. So Bears fans should be excited. Don't expect like to a winning record, but be yeah. excited about the future that's coming for the Bears. Okay. All right. Darius is 30. Oh, he's going to be 31 on the 29th. Oh, you well, just happy okay. You just didn't get birthday. into football yet. Got it. Okay. No okay. worries. Happy early birthday. Yeah, happy early yeah. birthday. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, sir. We, we love that. Thirty-one we'll man, to... still a young man right there. Young spring chicken. We'll have to yes. sing. Well, I'm not going to sing. You don't guys <laughs> really want that. Come on, I... you, you got to bring out your poppy 1990s. Uh, my inner Britney. Band. My inner Britney. Yeah. Come on, we need that. Yeah, inner don't Britney tempt hair me. flip. I think you know, Tudor yeah. will love a hair flip. Oh yeah, they did ask for there that. There we go. <laughs> you know, the All the boys thing. are. There we go. There we go. We we go. Like ending the show Work with the it. hair shake. Look it, but then it gets all wild and crazy, and it gets like insane over here. All right, and we are on OBJ watch. Where is Odell Beckham Jr. going to land? Not the G men, yeah. but knowing LPG. He could be like that. Could be for like Landon Collins or anything, and it would be everybody's like gonna freak out. But <laughs> obviously, OBJ is not coming to the Giants. I, I think obviously me. hold out hope. I know New England wants it. Everybody does. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. New England would be weird. I can't. I don't see him like going and getting super oh, excited. We forgot to mention him. He got paid too in New England. Juju. Oh, um, oh yeah, Juju, Juju. Yeah, I miss Juju. Yeah, Juju got paid. All right, um, I know a lot of you don't want OBJ. Yeah. So we will continue to watch and bring you guys the news that that we know. We will bring you fair and accurate news. What the Rush team does not do is create clickbait bullshit because we all have integrity when we report right. um, and we take it very seriously. So if we are reporting something, um, just know that it's accurate. I, I'll leave it at that because some of you out there are just really wild. <laughs> <laughs> really wild and crazy. All right, let's quickly transition to our best bets segment of the night. Normally in football season, this would be obviously, yes, Darius, I'm a big Britney fan. You have no idea. I've seen her like seven times in concert, but that's for another show. Um, that's a whole other show in itself. So <laughs> we will be bringing you best bets during football season. But since it's basketball season, we have best basketball bets for you guys. We will do this weekly. We'll get it posted up for you as well. I'm sure D will throw a video out there so you guys know. D, what do you got for us this week? Yes, so for tomorrow, it's a light NBA day since we have so much college basketball going on tomorrow, but we do have three games to bet on, so we can call this a par pay, as me and Nikki used to call it. So instead of a parlay, we know that these three bets get you paid, so we call it a par pay. So looking at the games tomorrow, we have the Denver Nuggets at the Detroit Pistons. Now, the Nuggets have been struggling lately, but this is a classic get-right game where you go and take your anger out on a bad team. Uh, The Nuggets are favored by 12-and-a-half. I think it is a blowout. So take the Nuggets and the 12-and-a-half. I think they cover the spread. 
Uh, we have Toronto hosting the OKC Thunder. Uh, Toronto is favored by six points. Take Toronto and the six. I think they cover the six points against OKC. OKC is not trying to win. They are making the moves, a classic, we're not tanking, but we're tanking type moves. So mm. I think that Toronto will take advantage. Toronto looked great against Denver last night. And the last game, we have Orlando at Phoenix. Orlando is a sneaky good team, young, lots of talent. Uh, their record can surprise you a little bit and throw you off their scent. They're a better team than their record suggests, and they're going against a Phoenix team that's struggling without Kevin Durant. Uh, Phoenix is favored by seven. Take Orlando plus seven, all right? So for the par pay, you take Denver minus 12 and a half mm. against Detroit, Toronto minus six against OKC, and Orlando plus seven against Phoenix. Go ahead and get paid, all right? I love that. I love that. And I love you guys in the comments because you love me and I love when people love me and who doesn't love that. Um, but I want to know what a noisy girl is. Nikki is a noisy it's girl. Joisy. It's oh, joisy jo girl. Joisy girl. <laughs> <laughs> Watch it, Tuto. Um, Danny, what about our Knicks? Our Knicks. Yes. Uh, Mitchell Robinson did not get me rebounds last night and ruined yeah. my parlay, so I was kind of pissed about All that. right, but at least you so, didn't wear a hoodie and ruin the entire week for everybody. Yes. And Villanova didn't get it. I, you know, I ruined everybody's week. I so did you put back on – so Nikki can't put back her Nick uh, hoodie back on because yeah. we went on a losing streak. Since yeah. <laughs> but all, all is good. Um, I can't wait for Brunson to come back. Mm -hmm. And they just got to keep it rolling. I don't know. It's the Knicks are weird because it's like they're they're obviously a good team, but they're not that team that's gonna make a run in the playoffs. If we do, it's gonna be a miracle, and I'll take it. But I yeah, guess I think it, it depends on the matchup. If you guys, yeah, but we, we we're not gonna be able to contain the Sixers or the Bucks or the who's the other one? Oh, and the, the Celtics. Celtics. Even though yeah. we've beaten them a few times, yeah. Yeah, Danny, don't come in here with this. Pa We've uh, no, no, no. We've been pessimists for a long, long time, right? Let's yeah. can we enjoy a little bit? I, of I know. I'm sorry, but Randall, I love Randall, but Randall drives me nuts. I know. I, I yeah. he'll like out of nowhere, he'll just decide to not like pass the ball, or like he'll just yeah. drive into like five guys, and like, how blind are you? There's five <laughs> guys there. Why are you doing this? But that's why you need Brunson. I think yeah, the addition 100%. of Brunson has brought the best out of Julius Randle. And if you guys get matched up against the Cavs in the first round, that could be a very, very interesting series. I like Cleveland a lot, but I think you guys match up with them well. That could be one where maybe you guys make a little run to the second round. Ooh, maybe. You never know. <laughs> uh, Danny, did you do your bracket? Yes, I did. Make sure everybody do their bracket. Okay, who's your final four? Because I didn't do mine yet, so I want to copy. Yeah, no, definitely not telling you that. Well, D <laughs> um, what before is it? I, before I leave because I have my other podcast. Yes, it's um pretty much front runner central. I have Utah, I have uh, Houston, UCLA, Duke, and Alabama. I mean, Houston wins. All right, and Ooh. D's got Alabama winning, and I, I will. Alabama I can't. I can't morally root for Alabama. I. That's the thing. I'm an LSU fan, so I'm not supposed to root for Alabama at all. Yeah. But I'm trying to be non-biased in this and yeah, try to win. Just the whole this situation Craig. really rubs me the wrong way. But that's we'll true. Too. I, I, I kind of like pressed on that a little bit when I said on the court they look great. Yeah. You know, off the court, definitely not talking about Alabama this year as far as you know good things. But I think their talent. But from what I've seen so far, can carry them in a, especially like a quick tournament run, can carry them. Right, for sure. I'm with you. Listen, All right, Danny, uh, go into your new your other. I said your new podcast. You go into your other podcast, leaving yeah. us to jump on your other podcast. Yeah. That's fine. Good night, guys. I'll talk Bye. to you guys later. Be good. Bye. Thanks for jumping on. That's it, guys. That's a wrap. Episode 11, 12. We had a jam-packed show for you guys. I hope that you enjoyed having Rob on, getting a behind-the-scenes look at what a sports agent goes through. I hope you guys enjoyed my new co-host, Damian. Get used to him. He will be here weekly. Catch Spartan and Truth on the draft show. It should be tomorrow. Um, and then Spartan will jump back in here after the draft is over of course we got danny's probably gonna hop in here at the end of the show you know how we do nikki and friends we will always have best bets for you and a couple other fun segments as we move through the off season um and we're always gonna have really cool interviews for you guys a couple housekeeping things um the giants guys monday at eight o'clock rush hour every wednesday seven o'clock and the draft show thursdays at eight o'clock 
Um, Nick Gates football camp is at Manalapan High School. You can get those tickets on Eventbrite. Um, and we all have the links in our bio. And Isaiah Hodgins football camp is, uh, well, Nick's is March 31st. Isaiah Hodgins is April 22nd. That's here in my hometown in Rumson. So that'll be fun. Rush crew will be there. Um, we'll have giveaways, live podcasts. If you need tickets, you can't find the link. Just DM any one of us and we will help you out. All right, guys. Thank you so much. That is a wrap and we will see you next week. Peace. Bye.